This is part two of my firewood box building project. Um, this is what I'm going to be building here, the, the CAD drawing. Today I'm going to be working on the end panel here. So I'll go in and show you the details of what that looks like. So this is going to be the end panel. It's got a bunch of machinings in it. Um, there's a, a mortise for the top two rails on each side, a cutout for the hand, which is rounded over, uh, another mortise on the bottom for the lower two rails, and then some uh, dados for the the side panels and the bottom panel. My first step here is to make sure that the panel I glued up last time is nice and square and the proper size. So I first use my speed square and my guide track to make sure that one end is perpendicular to the other and then I use my parallel guides to make sure that the other end is parallel to that and that'll make the whole panel nice and square. Then I have to go through the process of laying everything out I use a couple various tools, just my ruler, pencil, calipers, um, and once I've got it all laid out, I'll switch over to using my marking gauge and actually cut in a little line, since I'm going to be uh, cutting out some of these um, mortises by hand, the marking gauge will give me a nice sharp line to cut those too. So with that done, then I uh, drill some holes for the mortises. Uh, one thing I learned here is I make sure to have a backer block underneath this. The first couple ones I didn't have a backer block under and uh, it blew out the back side of them, so that was a bit of a hassle. After that I go through and I uh, very quickly chisel out the holes to be square here. Uh, this takes a little time consuming, but it's not too bad. Um, you could actually buy a square punch if I was going to do a bunch of these, but there's only eight of them, so it's easy enough just to do it with a, uh, a hammer and a chisel. Just take some my time, be a little patient, and they turn out pretty well. Next out up, I cut out the holes for the handles, the, they have a nice big radius on the bottom of them, so I use a drill bit for the radiuses. Also these, also important to make sure I got a backer block underneath there. Um, I was smart enough to realize that after the first one, so. Then I use my jigsaw to finish up those cutouts. Uh, got it set to go very slowly this jigsaw you can adjust how uh, the orbital is on it so I go pretty slowly to make sure it gives a nice clean cut uh, so I don't have to do as much sanding as it went a little faster and it's a little easier to control I did learn that it's important to make sure that the cut is perfectly tangent to the bottom of those circles um, otherwise when I'm going to do the next step uh, and round everything over, the round overs actually show that perfectly, so I mean, it just takes more time to do the sanding if you don't uh, make sure that everything lines up perfectly here. I did put some uh, duct tape on the bottom of the base of my jigsaw because I didn't want it to mar the surface of the, the wood. I have a, a fancier jigsaw, a lot of them come with a non-marring base, but I just threw some duct tape on the bottom of it and it prevents it from marring it anything. And I switch over to my little uh, DeWalt router. It's got a quarter inch round over bit in it. My problem here is twofold though. Uh, my bit is fairly dull, so you can see that it does burn the wood a little bit. And then also the bearing on the bottom of it is very large, so it doesn't get into the corners. So I've got the router table set up here to cut the slots in the ends of the box for the plywood. So it's going to run from here to here. Um, and I've got my router table set up with a slot cutting bit. It's only an eighth inch slot cutting bit and the plywood is 0.2047 inches thick so I'll have to make two passes raising it in between. Um, I'm just going to be able to run it through. I'm going to have to drop it in because this, I don't want the slot to come out the end so I'll drop it in, run it down, and pull it out before we get through.
I ran into an issue here that the dust collection actually sucked the board into the bit, so I had to be very careful when I was dropping it in to make sure it didn't snap in. Uh, but once it was on there, it was very easy. It held it up nice and perpendicular uh, with that suction, so that worked out pretty well. And then I just used my little handheld router to cut the bottom dado. I had to make a couple passes here to get it to the right depth and the right width, and that was it. Thanks for watching this part. Um, tune in next time where I'll make the, the rails and the plywood parts for the rest of the box. Thanks for watching.